Oh my, he got a haircut. That's not what this video is about. What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mostly do portraits, events, weddings, anything with people in it. That's what I like to shoot. And recently, I have been working with this, the Nikon Z8. I was very lucky to have Nikon send this over to me. Big thanks to Nathan and Chris over at Nikon Canada for letting me take this. Uh, I recently was on a trip to Italy. I was there for the Way Up North Festival conference. Festival, it wasn't really a festival, it was a conference. Festivals happen in fields. This was in an auditorium. It was a conference. While I was there, I was shooting for a brand called Dita Artigianale. They are a coffee roastery and they also have six cafes. And we were uh, documenting their grand opening of a new cafe, 10 year anniversary, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I also shot BTS for uh, for Jeff, who is uh, known as the apartment photo. He is an amazing human being, just a really good guy. Uh, so I was doing a lot of different stuff with the Z8. I also used it to do BTS for the uh, Canada Photo Summit. So I've had a good amount of time with this camera. Certainly not long enough to give it like a very thorough review, but I, I do feel like I, I understand the basics of the camera and I just want to give you something very simple and straightforward. A lot of people like the Lumix S5-2X under five minute review, so that's kind of what we're going to follow here. So without further ado, let's get into talking about the Nikon Z8. I've got my book. This is my book. This is where I keep all my notes. Okay, talking about ergonomics first. Uh, very comfortable. I like where everything is placed more or less. I have regular size hands for a guy. A couple things I don't like though. Uh, one, I wish it had a, I wish it had a wheel. It just has a D-pad. I, I prefer a wheel. It just helps me with the way that I have my workflow because usually I'll put my ISO on the wheel. Uh, for this, if I want to change ISO, uh, what I have to do is kind of hit the ISO button and then change it from there. It's a secondary workflow, but you can you can make it faster. You can program the buttons differently to make it a little bit quicker. But that's just a preference thing. That's not like a terrible thing about the camera. It's just not how I typically work. Second thing is the user interface with this camera. Okay, so when I look at this, I don't know, I'm kind of on two sides. Like I find it, there's so much you can do with this. It's such a wildly powerful camera. It's a little overwhelming, this menu. And also there's a lot of language in this menu that is different from other manufacturers. So you kind of have to get to know what they mean when they say certain things. And that's true of all camera brands. So that's not like a hit against Nikon. It's just having not shot with a Nikon since the DSLR days, for me, it is, uh, it, it's just like taking a little bit of time to get used to the menus and what certain things mean. Number three, autofocus. Now you can't talk about autofocus of a camera without talking about the lenses that you're using. And a lot of people don't bring this up. Like when you look at autofocus reviews of certain cameras, they talk about it like across the board, like it's equal and it's just not. So I had the 51.8 and I also had the 26 f 2.8 and those respond very differently. They've got different types of focusing motors in them. And so something like the, the 26 is like a little bit noisy. It hunts a little more. It, it has a lot of focus breathing, but it's not meant to be a video lens. So that makes sense and that's totally fine. So I'd say a couple things about the autofocus. The first being that out of the box, I don't find the autofocus works perfectly. Like I basically reset this and I wasn't super happy with the results I was getting from the autofocus. It just felt a little off. Once I started diving in and customizing it a little bit, it worked really, really well. And that is maybe the thing, like when people compare autofocus, I think we also have to think about the fact that like, just because it doesn't come straight out of the box perfect the way you want it, doesn't mean that autofocus is bad. It just means that it is required to be used in a slightly different way. Now this video isn't sponsored, but I do have to take a quick pause to say this. Please do me a favor. Look down there for a sec. Yeah, you see that little like subscribe and like button stuff going on there? Just just hit subscribe, just hit it. If you're not subscribed, it'd be super cool. It's a cute little thing to do and it helps me out. Now that like button, if you hit that, that's dope too. The dislike button, I guess you could hit it, but don't, why do that? You don't need to do that. Nobody needs to do that. You can do that if you want to, I don't really care. Um, but uh, definitely subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can know when I put out new silly videos and uh, you can watch my hair grow again to get long because I'll probably grow it long again because I oscillate between like cutting it all off because I get frustrated and let's get back to the video. Subscribe. One of the biggest things here, image quality. The photos look stunning. The raw files are super easy to work with. The video looks beautiful. I find that it, it, it responds really well to grading or if you just want to shoot, like a lot of what I shot was just using a standard or like a flat profile and it works really nicely straight out of camera. I think it would be cool if it recorded open gate. That would be the only thing, but it's a 45 megapixel sensor. It's full frame. So recording open gate would be like, I don't know, the whole thing would probably explode. 
ecosystem. Uh, it's very good. You can get the Z adapter so that you can use all your old Nikon glass, so that's great. Between first and third party lenses and everything, you have a good ecosystem with almost every camera now, so I don't think you really have to worry about that too much. Battery life, uh, it's fine. It's not great. I, I did find that I was chewing through batteries a bit, but I was also traveling, and for some reason when you're traveling, it happens with your phone too, right? You just like crush through batteries. I was doing a lot of hybrid stuff, right? Photo and video at the same time, and I was also like using an on-camera mic, and so like I was probably drawing some power that way and stuff. So I don't know, it's, it's fine, but it's not amazing. Price, okay, this camera's expensive. I think this is the hard part with Nikon currently, is that if you wanna get like a two-body system, and you want something that is like very capable, you kind of have to go with the Z8 or the Z9 and maybe the ZF. And that's tough because they're all, I mean the ZF is not super expensive, but it's a different style of camera, so you have to think about that. The Z8 and the Z9 are both very pricey. I would say that the Z8 is, it's, it's like similar price to like the R5 or something like that. Uh, one thing is right now there is actually a really good deal going on, and so it's making this camera like pretty affordable considering the fact that it is like, a monster of a camera. You get so much out of this camera. So I would say like the price is justified, certainly, but it is more expensive. If I had to say one issue I had with this camera, the biggest thing that was frustrating for me was the fact that it didn't have a mechanical shutter. Now, I'm not saying that because of like any type of rolling shutter issues or anything like that. It's actually because I shoot a lot of events. I don't do a ton of super quiet events either. Like I do a lot of events where people are like chatting and going out and having fun and there's music and there's dancing and all this kind of stuff. And so sometimes there's this interesting thing, right? Where it's like this camera is an electronic shutter and it has like a zero blackout, which is cool and that's great. The problem is I ran into this issue where like a bunch of times I was like, I don't know if I took the shot. And I had to kind of like watch the buffer go down and make sure I was actually shooting because I couldn't hear the, uh, the little shutter sound because it was too loud. There's no feedback from the mechanical shutter and there's no haptic feedback. I don't know, I just, I had this issue. It's almost like this camera's like too good. Like the zero blackout is a great thing, but because of it, because there's no mechanical shutter, I, I wasn't always sure I was taking the photo and I had to like kind of jump back and review. So last thoughts, would I actually buy this camera? Um, yeah, I think so. I would probably go with the Z9 over the Z8 only because the built-in battery grip, um, the better battery life, the ergonomics of it, there's a couple little differences between it, but I, I don't mind having a bigger camera body. I'm like, I would rather like, this is already pretty big. Like this is a big, huge, beautiful screen and it, it's a larger size camera, feels more DSLR like. You might as well, like I would probably even consider putting a battery grip on this. So at that point, you might as well just like go for it, right? Get the Z9 and be happy with that. It is a great camera. Should you buy it? Probably if you can afford it. That's my take. So again, thank you so much to Nikon for lending this camera to me. I really appreciate it. Now they weren't asking me to do a review. This was purely just they're good people and, and they happened to lend the camera to me. I'm not even sure if they know I have a YouTube channel, um, but uh, but thank you again to Chris and Nathan for making that happen. Cool, thank you so much. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you shoot on this? Do you like this camera? Do you hate this camera? I would love to hear what you have to think. Um, tell me more about you, maybe. I don't know. Peace.